today we're going to talk about elasticities. We're going to talk about elasticity of demand, income elasticity, and cross price elasticity. So with the elasticity of demand, what elasticity is, it's measuring uh, the percent change of one item divided by the percent change of another item. It, it shows the sensitivity between uh, the numerator and the denominator. So for elasticity of demand, we're looking at the percent change of quantity of demand divided by the percent change of price. There are two formulas in textbooks to calculate this. The first one is the more advanced, the, the better formula. It's going to take the quantity, the new quantity minus the old quantity, divided by the average of the new and the old, and that'll be your percent change of quantity, and then for your denominator, you'll take your new price minus your old price divided by the average between the new and the old. The reason why we like the average is because it allows for adjustments for seasonalities. It'll help soften if there's any extreme values between quantity one and quantity two in your data. Okay. The other method in the textbook is Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1. So it's not averaging anymore. Okay. Divided by P the new price minus the old price divided by the old price. Okay. So this is popular in a lot of textbooks okay. also. Okay. But again, uh, this number will give you a, a, a larger number, a number further away from zero. Where if with the exact same data, if I use this formula, it's going to give me a more conservative number, a number closer to zero. So if I have an extreme positive or extreme negative uh, number, now uh, this number, this would be less extreme, and this would be more extreme with the same data again. Okay, and so you're going to get an answer, and that answer is probably going to be a, a negative number because it's elasticity of demand and demand is a downward slope. So what we want to do then is we want to take our answer and use the absolute value of our answer. Okay. If our answer is less than one, that is inelastic. Some examples of inelastic items could be like oil. Okay. So the price of oil could go up, but the demand would change very little. Also, maybe something like cigarettes okay, or alcohol, if the prices go up, people will still consume ru roughly the same amount. Okay. So inelastic is not very sensitive. Elastic, the consumers are now very sensitive to changes in price. So if I change price a little, it will affect my demand a lot. Something that's elastic would be something that there's many substitutes. Consumers have many other choices. There are many substitutes. Okay. And then unit elastic uh, is the ideal price that everyone in marketing would like to get at. So if I were to graph, uh, make a graph real quick for inelastic, we could have something that's perfectly inelastic would be a straight up and down vertical line. Okay. That would be perfectly, okay, oops, sorry, perfectly inelastic. Perfectly elastic okay. would look something like that. That's again perfectly. Now, fairly inelastic is going to be a steep slope. It's going to be my demand curve would look something like that. That's highly, highly inelastic. So what it means is I could change my price from here to here. We could have huge price changes. We could raise the price, but the demand changed uh, ever so slightly. Something that's highly elastic is going to be a fairly ho lazy horizontal line. So if I were to change price just a little bit, okay, 
my demand changed a lot. What we want to be is unit elastic. Uh, let me graph it here. If I were to graph my revenue, my total revenue would look something like this. So at the very top of my total revenue, here. So this would be equals one. This would be unit elastic. This part of my demand curve, this would be inelastic, meaning I could raise the price and I would increase my total revenue. I would make more money if I raise the price. So if it's inelastic, we want to raise the price to make more money. And then anything above this dot, I would be elastic, okay. meaning I would want to lower the price and I would make more money. And in Elastic, I want to raise the price and I'll make more revenue, more money. Okay. We'll now talk about income elasticity. So income elasticity is going to look at it's the, the same formula as elasticity demand except for my P's are now I's for income. So we're looking at how different income levels change, how that affects the quantity demanded. So the formulas are the same there. So if your answer, if you get a negative answer here, this time we're not going to take the absolute values of our answer. If I get a negative answer, it's an inferior good. An inferior good might be a cup of noodles. So if you make more money, you'll eat less cup of noodles and more of other goods. Maybe a luxury good would be like uh, steak. Okay. So when my income goes up, I'll eat more steak, more lobster. Okay. Inferior goods might be uh, maybe like uh, s soda pop yeah. or noodles. Uh, your microwave. A normal good, if my income goes up or down, it's not affecting my, my level of consumption. It may be something like water, uh, drinking water. The third one is cross price elasticities. So cross price elasticities we're looking at the percent change of quantity demand for good X divided by the percent change for qu qu uh, the price of good Y. So maybe I would be looking at uh, the quantity demand for bread. Okay, maybe this is bread. And maybe the price of Y, maybe this is uh, jelly. So if the price of jelly were to go up, or ham, or cheese, if these things were to go up, would the quantity demand for bread go down? Okay. If yes, then what we have is a complement. Okay. So jelly and bread, hot dogs and hot dog buns. Okay hot dogs and buns, okay. ketchup and french fries. So if the price of uh, french fries doubles, okay. then will the quantity demand for ketchup go down? Probably. So they would be complements if your answer is less than one. If our answer is greater than one, then they're substitutes. So a substitute would be if the price of something goes up, you'll buy more of the other item. So we could have uh, maybe uh, beer and wine might be some f form of substitute. 
we could have uh, uh, gasoline and battery cars uh, battery operated cars so if the price of gasoline goes up the demand for battery operated cars would also go up they would be substitutes and here's our the similar formula for that as well okay so now we have four examples here for you so go ahead and uh, write these down and try to solve using the formulas so we'll solve uh, these two and then we'll solve these two so we'll have two different answers and then look at your answers and see is it are they inelastic, elastic, or unit elastic? Okay. And then here we'll have one, two, three answers. And then here we'll have one answer and then another answer. Okay. So go ahead and solve for those numbers. And pause the video and then and we're back. So here are our answers. I hope you got the same that we did. So for my elasticity of demand, I have my work, we should have 1 and then 0 0.17. Here's our work on how we got the 1. So when it's 1, it's unit elastic. When I go from 1 to 0 0.17, so 0 0.17 is less than 1, so now it's inelastic. So when I'm going from 4 to 3, I'm inelastic, I should raise the price and I'll make more money. Okay. So when I'm going from 4 to 5, I'm becoming unit E elastic. And that's our perfect price point. Okay. For income elasticity, okay. so as I go from 10,000 to 20,000, I'm 1.61. So 1.61 is greater than 1, so it's a luxury good. When I go from 20,000 to 30,000 in income, now I'm less than 1, more of a, norm, a normal good. And when I go from 30 to 40,000, I'm less than 0, I'm now an inferior good. Now this is very useful for marketing, uh, both of these equations. In marketing, we have a target market, a market segment that we're trying to uh, spend our advertising dollars to get to buy us. So if you have a target market in their income level, you know how they view your product. So the people who, whose incomes are from 10 to 20,000, they view your product as a luxury good. So that can help you deliver your message to them. So a luxury item is something that they they don't need but they want to have a desire for. When the economy is doing well, marketing to these people, they'll be able to buy your product. When the economy is not doing well, people spend less on luxury items. So these people are no longer uh, consuming your product when the economy is going down. People between 20 and 30, these are your normal, uh, they view you as a normal good, so whether the, their incomes are changing from this range, they'll still buy your product. Okay. And then people with the higher level incomes, if you wanted to market to them, you're marketing as an inferior good. So you would want to say, hey, buy your product because it's cheaper than eating steak and lobster. Save the money. Okay. So they would view you as an inferior good. And here's our solution for the 1.61. We're plugging in the values and solving. And then finally is our cross price elasticity. And we have one of them solved for you. So the first example was 1.69. 1.69 is greater than 1. It's a substitute. So when the price of Y went from 7 to $8, the demand for good X went up. So they would be substitutes. In the, exec the second example, the price is going down 
and of one item and people are buying more of another item. So they would be complements less than one. So those are the three types of elasticity. Thank you and hope that answered all of your questions.